Introducing uh, a first-timer here on the Winds of New England, making his first appearance on Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Milford, New Hampshire, George Ashley. Okay, and George comes in averaging 123, high single 198, high triple 440. All right, now we always have our bonus ball contest to talk about, and since we uh, didn't have any winners toward the end of last season, we are at $80 right now as we start the new year, so $80 in the bonus ball contest at the end of the hour. We'll tell you how you can enter that a little bit later on. And also, a brand new wrinkle this year for the bowlers, and I know they'll be excited about that, and that is a triple strike pool that will begin today at $250. That's right, and it'll grow by $50 each week until we hit a maximum of $2,000. We'll explain more about that as we go on. All right, we've got a lot to talk about as we begin our 13th season here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Jack Ray against George Ashley, three games of Candlepin Bowling, and we'll get it started right after these messages. Don't go away. Hey, nice bowl of shredded wheat. Yeah, I think so. Well, you could eat total and get 100% of 11 vitamins and minerals. Try to get that from shredded wheat, and you'll have to add more than just milk. Like what? Well, you could try strawberries for vitamin C. Oh, that sounds good. Lima beans for iron, eggs for some vitamin E. you got to be kidding. Some peanuts for niacin, or a nice piece of liver for some B6. I'll try the total. Whole grain total. One bowl, 100%. Hey, don't eat mm. it just for me. Mm. Mm. Hi, I've been telling you that at Rockingham, Toyota, Dodge, Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire, you will find the best price from a dealership that cares. Well, let me tell you what you will find when you get there. First, when we can display Toyota, Dodge, and Nissan at one location, this is a rare opportunity for you to view the best selection of cars, trucks, and minivans in New England. Second, we are constantly adding cars and trucks to our used car inventory. So if it's a new or used car or truck, just remember Rockingham, Toyota, Dodge, Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire. Can you guess which cereal will now carry the American Heart Association symbol? The answer shouldn't surprise you. It's Cheerios. A diet low in saturated fat and cholesterol, including Cheerios, may help reduce the risk of heart disease. This Cheerios, made from whole grain oats, is also a good source of fiber. And those delicious O's are low in fat and saturated fat with no cholesterol. No wonder Cheerios carries the American Heart Association symbol. Introducing new Honey Nut Clusters with a taste everybody will love. New Honey Nut Clusters combines Honey Toasted Flakes and Honey Nut Clusters for a delicious Honey Nutty taste. New Honey Nut Clusters, the taste everybody loves. Everybody. <laughs> Tokens of love, the hug, the kiss, the brownie. If somebody bakes you a chocolatey Betty Crocker brownie, maybe they're trying to tell you something. With Betty Crocker, life is sweet. Tonight, when it's time to call your kids to the dinner table, why not let the biscuits call them for you? Bisquick, make the most of it. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Tri-State Megabucks. And now, with Mega Cash, choose your dream. Welcome back to Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire, our home for 13 years now here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And here are the five bowlers who will be joining us for our first series of the year. We've already introduced you to Jack Ray and George Ashley, our two competitors today. The winner today will come back next week to face Glenn LeBlanc. You'll notice that the roll-off scores for Glenn and George are identical. That tie is broken by the high single, of course, in the roll-off, and Glenn LeBlanc rolled a 163 to George Ashley's 158, so that uh, resulted in the seeding turning out the way it did. Paul Berger is our number two seed. Tom Morgan is the number one seed at 702. We will see him in about three weeks' time as he comes in to try and defend that number one spot. But lots of bowling to attend to between now and then, and Jack Ray will throw the first ball of our brand-new season. <laughs> and he'll shoot at the 3-9 with Wood. The wood should help a little bit, although it's turned a little bit toward the ten, where the ten pin would have been. But those are the two pins you knock out for a half whister to the right. And he's got it for the first mark. 
We just saw the roll-off scores, and we should mention that the uh, roll-off for this series was held at Bolamania in Newmarket, New Hampshire, thanks to Jim Maston and Keith Gagnon and all the staff there for handling all the details for us. Seven fill on the mark for Jack. Chance for another here with the way the wood is laid out. Let's see. Five, six, and ten. And he's oh, got it. Great shot. Two in a row by Jack Ray. And another look. Using that wood to snap around and get the five pin. Right. Played the 6-10 and then uh, got the five pin from behind with that second piece of wood. Very nicely done by Jack Ray. And now George Ashley. Man, oh. how about that for a start? Well, he's the rookie uh, of the uh, contestants in this ladder, and he's going to have something to talk about. First ball with us. It's a strike. That'll loosen up the jitters pretty quickly. Absolutely. Another good looking one. He's going to shoot at the same three pins Jack shot at. However, he doesn't have the benefit of the wood being behind that five pin. Shoot the 6-10, snap the wood, and no. almost. Good effort. And George will take the 10 box. So he's able to answer Jack Ray's two marks with a strike, but. He'll be trailing after this fill, no doubt, unless Jack has a bad ball here. Oh. Got a break there, actually. He sure did. Uh, but Jack, uh, his body English told me he knew that ball was going to be to the right. But he leaves himself to one, two, and four. For three in a row? No. How did that pin stay up? Jack can't believe it. Boy, he took a long look down there after that one. Looked like he had hit it perfectly. Instead, it's just a 10 box. Well, it could have been three marks in a row, but instead it's a 10. Jack in the lead. Jack's last time here was back in April of 1995 when he rolled a 386, but it wasn't good enough. He lost that match to Gary Carrington. Crossing over in the Brooklyn side, everything but the five. Piece of wood resting against the five pin. Got it. Well, four boxes completed, three spares for Jack Ray. George Ashley will rock the six and ten, but he'll wind up with the four horsemen. He's got some help coming up behind the one and the three pins as well, which should keep those two in play if he can catch the head pin. No, he's too far to the right. Ten box for George. In the roll-offs, the final roll-off for this series, as we've mentioned before here on the program, the roll-off consists of five games, total pinfall for five games. And uh, in the final roll-off over in Newmarket, George Ashley was actually out of the top five going into his last five boxes, but he marked five consecutive boxes his last time up. The bowlers uh, step up and roll five boxes at a time in roll-off competition. And he managed five consecutive marks, and that lifted him into the fourth spot. And it also knocked Gary Carrington out of this series. Gary finished sixth in the alternate spot, just two pins behind Jack Ray. Jack working on another spare, and this one he lost to the left, and no break this time. Just pulled that ball badly to the left. Got just the four, seven, and eight pins. Oh, but a great recovery. Well, if he throws that ball on the spare, who knows? He might have had a strike. No, it just goes to show you that first ball probably uh, just slipped or just got away from him. Recovered nicely, as Doug said. Fourth mark out of five boxes. 
Just missed the head pin that time, and he'll take seven. 74 half for Jack Ray. Looking at the one, three, and ten. And there's another mark. Five out of six boxes, all spares. George Ashley has one mark. That was the strike in the first. A light hit. And this could be interesting. The six, seven, and ten with wood everywhere. It's a lot worse than it is. That wood should help him. Oh, no. Not quite on the seven. It may have gone a little bit too far to the left. I still thought he might carry it. That'll be a nine. Nine box for George. Trails by 18 halfway through game one. Full this time, but he carries the seven pin. How did the seven pin go out of there? That was flush on the head pin. Leaves himself to 6-10. Not only that, piece of wood right directly in front. He'll take that for his first spare of the day. Both bowlers now working on spares in the sixth frame. Jack will fill his first. Look out, Jack bidding for his first strike of the day. For a minute, I thought he was going to be left with a 4-10, but kick the 10-pin out, leaves the 4-pin. Piece of wood in front should be no problem for him. Sixth out of seven boxes, all spares. Candlepin Stars and Strikes brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Always Coca-Cola. Right on the head pin again, but that looked huh. pretty good going in. Boy. Leaves himself the four, five, seven, ten piece of wood that's probably gonna roll off. No, nope, it's gonna stick around. Well, he's gonna have to wait for it. It may which, come back, which might not be bad news. It's <laughs> his only salvation right now. He, he doesn't want to shoot these four pins without any wood. Regardless of where it stops. It's gonna give him a better chance. A little bit more right now while we're waiting for the wood to settle about our triple strike jackpot uh, presented by the NHCBA Candlepin Stars and Strikes this season. Any bowler who hits a triple strike will win whatever is in the jackpot. The jackpot begins today at $250. Oh, good effort by Jack. Boy, he did about all he could do with that. The triple strike jackpot will increase by $50 each week up to a maximum of $2,000. If no one has hit it by the time we get up to $2,000, it will stay at $2,000, and then it will continue at $2,000 every week until somebody hits it. But as the jackpot holds at $2,000, a secondary pool will begin, and when somebody finally hits the $2,000 jackpot, the secondary jackpot will begin at whatever it has accumulated to. So an extra chance for the bowlers to make some cash, and uh, that should be very exciting because especially with the conditions here at uh, Park Place Lane, strikes can be plentiful. That's right. <clears throat> George Ashley takes a nine for 81 through 70, trails by 28 pins to this point. Jack Ray finally leaving an open box for George Ashley to work on. George gets into the pocket for the 6'10". Six. That piece of wood out front may or may not be in play. That is in play. Shouldn't affect the shot. It doesn't. George makes it easily for the spare. His third mark. Jack Ray wants that six pin to go, the four pin rather to go. It's not going to happen, but uh, he's got a piece of wood next to it. Let's see if he can somehow jump that piece of wood into the 10 pin. 
Nope. Not quite. First time in the match. Two open frames in a row for Jack. Jack and his wife uh, Kelly have two children, six-year-old Jessica and two-year-old Mitchell. Jack works at Marjam Supply as a sales representative. And when Jack is on, as evidenced by that 220 high single that you talked about earlier, Dan, he's as good as anybody there is in the game. He's been a little erratic today on the head pin on the first ball, but he's still made six marks. And he's a, he's a competitor, too. He, up by 20, down by 20, you just can't count him out. Now there's a chance for George Ashley to get some of that, or cut into some of that lead of Jack Ray's. He'll Nine bucks for Jack. He opened the last three frames, and George is working on a spare in the eighth. Jack winds up with a 137. With six spares. Big ball for George. Right in the pocket. Oh, oh give me wow. a break. Look oh, at no. this. How about that? Seven, eight, nine, ten. The back row after hitting the one three pocket. Piece of wood, but uh, looks good for the seven and the eight, but I don't know about the nine and the ten. I'll tell you what, Dan, you could you could stand up there and throw bowling balls from now until the millennium and never leave that. <laughs> That's leave. right. That is very, very unusual. A nine box. Well, he cut six pins off the lead. It now stands at 22, but he's opposite, as you can see, a nine box by Jack Ray. A nice mark here would even cut into it a little more. Well, he'll have a shot at one, but let's see what this wood is going to do. The two and the eight. So the wood to stop in the back. Well, he's got to be on the two pin. If he's on the two pin, he's got a chance at making it. No, oh, oh. just slid by. Might have tried to be a little too fine with that one and just said of taking that object pin, the two pin, or three pin, I should say. Oh, he could have made it that way, <laughs> too, it appears, maybe. A 116 for George Ashley in game one. Jack Ray with the lead by 21 pins. We've got two games to go, and also the details coming up on how you can take part in our bonus ball contest. That's next on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. ultrasound technician just sort of pointed to the screen and said there's the baby and there's the other baby it appears you're having twins at st joseph people don't forget our way of care well we were in labor for 26 hours so we went through three shifts of nursing and they always explained everything that was going on and 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 really made us feel a lot better ask Kristen and stephen mcteague or ask anyone he cut both cords There is power in a dream And every hour a dreamer is born Just imagine the friends we made The lives we touched, the glory days Ten years of dreams Ten years of dreams Come true Honey Nut Cheerios, and they're all for me. Nobody can say no to new Honey Nut Cheerios. No, no, you can't say no to the Honey Nut O's in new Honey Nut Cheerios. What's new is a better blend of real golden honey for a better taste and a bigger crunch. Nobody can say no to the Honey Nut O's in new Honey Nut Cheerios. No, no, you can't say no to new Honey Nut Cheerios. It's new. Everybody loves this stuff. Expressions of love, cuddling, tickling, frosting. Betty Crocker Rich and Creamy Frosting. When you love someone, spread it on thick. With Betty Crocker, life is sweet. On Saturday mornings, Bisquick pancakes come out picture perfect. And if they don't, they still taste just as good. Bisquick. Make the most of it. Can you guess which cereal will now carry the American Heart Association symbol? The answer shouldn't surprise you. It's Cheerios. A diet low in saturated fat and cholesterol, including Cheerios, may help reduce the risk of heart disease. 
This Cheerios made from whole grain oats is also a good source of fiber. And those delicious O's are low in fat and saturated fat with no cholesterol. No wonder Cheerios carries the American Heart Association symbol. One and only Cheerios. Candle Pin Stars and Strikes is brought to you in part by Coca-Cola Classic. Always the real thing, always Coca-Cola. Mentioned earlier, our bonus ball contest is $80 as we start the new season. You did bring the money back. We told you to hold it over the summer. Oh, like boy. We always, did you bring it back? Uh, well, we'll bill you later. Don't right, worry. I'll about give it. you a check. $80 <laughs> in the jackpot today. <laughs> and uh, if you'd like to get in on the winning, just send a regular size postcard only with your name, your full address, and the number from 1 to 10, the number of pins you think will drop on the bonus ball thrown by our winning bowler at the end of the show and mail that into Park Place Lanes, Route 28. Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. Good luck. We had a big winner uh, right toward the end of last season, and uh, perhaps the next one will be you. Who knows? I should say better yet, the check is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> George Ashley leading off game two with a spare leave on the one, two, and four, and some wood coming over to help. Trailing a little. by 21. This would be nice to start off the second game with. Oh, yes. He does. Mark number four for George Ashley. He moves over to lane 31 now here at Park Place, right on the head pin, maybe a little full. I wanted the uh, four and seven to clear out of there. The four dropped, but left himself the seven. It's a situation, a three, six, seven. You've got to concentrate on catching the three and the six. Oh, he tried to slip that ball right off the cap of that lead wood and did not miss it by much. Not a bad choice either. And tried to grab the three and the six. Got just the six for an eight box. Gives him 25 through two. Candlepin Stars and Strikes brought to you in part by Tri-State Megabucks. Just imagine. Tri-State Megabucks, of course, has been with us for so many years here on the program. And the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions, the ninth annual Tournament of Champions, will come up in the spring. Our big end of the season special. Jack Ray going for the spare, and he's got it. One, two, and seven. It was a little more difficult than it looked. Caught the cap of that wood and the head pin watch at the same time. Drove everything back left. That's seven marks for Jack Ray, all spares so far. Look out. There's oh, his first there strike. Is. <laughs> With a little back kick from the eight pin helping out. The eight pin, was started, the eight pin started to fall and watch the wood because it comes in contact with that piece of wood right there and kicks that into the five. George Ashley. Ooh. We've seen this leave a couple of times today on the other side. Now the four, five, and seven. It's, it's not impossible, but I... Ooh. Don't see it made very often. George will take the nine. George Ashley from Milford, New Hampshire. He and his wife, Nancy, have two children, Sandra and Heather. George works as a machinist for Williams and Hussey. Inc. Right back in the 1-3 pocket. Leaves himself to two, four, five, and seven. Talked about the uh, 200 high single and how few have done it. Oh. George, Ashley, George Ashley's high single is 198. A couple of open frames for George, and Jack Ray comes up working on a strike, already carrying, as you see, a 26-pin lead here. Game two of three here on our season premiere of Candlepin Stars and Strikes, and I'm sure there might be uh, many of you tuning in our program for the first time today. Perhaps some of you had a chance to join us for our season premiere of Candlepin Skins yesterday from Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill, but uh, wherever you might be along the lines, uh, we had a lot of new cable systems picking up the winds of New England during this summer, so if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. We hope you uh, will have time to join us every week Great Candlepin Bowling, Saturday and Sunday at noon, every weekend here on the Winds of New England. Gives Jack 47 through three. 
Increases the lead to 34 overall. And Jack, back in the second frame, was one-third his way to the bonus of the triple strike. But he's going to go up the other two. It's going to be <laughs> exciting when uh, somebody gets up there and throws a couple. One, three, four, and seven for Jack. Either split the one and three or be to the left of the head pin. No. He was flush on the head pin, drove it straight back. So Jack cannot take advantage of those two open frames. He will take a nine box. Pair of nines for both bowlers in the third and fourth. So that leaves Jack Ray's lead at 34 as we approach the halfway point. We'll be back with more candle pin bowling on the winds of New England after these messages. Hey, nice bowl of shredded wheat. Yeah, I think so. Well, you could eat total and get 100% of 11 vitamins and minerals. Try to get that from shredded wheat, and you'll have to add more than just milk. Like what? Well, you could try strawberries for vitamin C. Oh, that sounds good. Lima beans for iron, eggs for some vitamin E. You gotta be kidding. Some peanuts for niacin, or a nice piece of liver for some B6. I'll try the total. Whole grain total, one bowl, 100%. Hey, don't eat mm. it just for me. Mm. Hi, I've been telling you that at Rockingham, Toyota, Dodge, Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire, you will find the best price from a dealership that cares. Well, let me tell you what you will find when you get there. First, when we can display Toyota, Dodge, and Nissan at one location, this is a rare opportunity for you to view the best selection of cars, trucks, and minivans in New England. Second, we are constantly adding cars and trucks to our used car inventory. So if it's a new or used car or truck, just remember Rockingham, Toyota, Dodge, Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire. New Honey Nut Cheerios, and they're all for me. Nobody can say no to New Honey Nut Cheerios. No, no, you can't say no to the Honey Nut O's in New Honey Nut Cheerios. What's new is a better blend of real golden honey for a better taste and a bigger crunch. Nobody can say no to the Honey Nut O's in New Honey Nut Cheerios. No, no, you can't say no to New Honey Nut Cheerios. It's new. Everybody loves this stuff. Introducing new Honey Nut Clusters with a taste everybody will love. New Honey Nut Clusters combines honey toasted flakes and honey nut clusters for a delicious honey nutty taste. New Honey Nut Clusters, the taste everybody loves. Everybody. <laughs> Such a sweet and crunchy part of this complete breakfast, this box never closes. They're delicious. And they're all mine. Oh mine. Those wholesome little owls have been frosted for a crunchy sweet taste everyone's into. Hey, they're frosted. Hey, we're clay. Frosted Cheerios taste so good, this box never closes. Hey, Ma, where are my boxer shorts? Right here, son. Now you can get into Joe Boxer Boxers from Frosted Cheerios. Free with two proofs of purchase plus shipping and handling. George Ashley set to go as we resume the action in game two. George making his first appearance here on the wins. A little too far right, four horsemen left, plus the six and the 10. Oh, what a try Great there. Great shot. Oh. Played it to the right of the head pin, had the ball go down and take out the six and 10. And Managed the one, two, and four, but not that seven. It was very close. You can see right off Oof. the head pin, and that four pin danced right around the seven without touching it. Again, off the head pin, a little better break. One, seven, and nine. Well, he started and saw this wood start the move. This may help the I shot. Up. I would say so. Gives him another piece if he catches the head pin. That will come off the right side wall. The other two should go back and probably come off the left. Yes. Is that piece of wood took out the nine pin? Was I think it was. I and think it was. Let's take a look here. 
This is the, that, yes, that piece of wood that came rolling up right at the end. And that, that was very strange, the way that happened. It looked like it was still over by the right channel, and then it started to move out. Oh. There's a strike for Jack Ray. His second one of this game. And you see the replays in the 1-3 pocket. He comes forward for the two-pin from behind. Nine marks halfway through the match for Jack Ray. Going for the double? No. Not quite the double he was <laughs> anticipating. Not the two and the eight. Oh, how about this? Oh, my. Well, he makes a mistake with one ball, but he doesn't make a second mistake, at least not in the row. He recovers nicely for nine fill on the strike. And a 10 gives him 85. And just quietly increasing his lead. George Ashley, though, working on a spare in the sixth. No, well, George lost that one to the right, but again, not a bad break for missing the head pin. No, it's the one, two, seven, eight. Piece of wood behind the two pin. Another one in between the seven and eight. There's another mark. First time today that George has been able to put back-to-back -back marks up there, and he's going to have to do that in order to come from behind here. Six marks on the day now for George. Now he's on the head pin, but a little too full. Wouldn't you know it? And the 4-7 in the left-hand corner, but he's got the six pin with a couple pieces of wood now. He was getting better leaves when he was off the head pin. <laughs> Try to snap this pair. Of... Oh, yes, yeah. and he does. Up and over. Three in a row. Take a look. Perfect. Just had enough angle on that front piece. And that was one of those cases, Dan, where the two pieces helped because right. the back piece deadened that first one and sent it over to the four and the seven. Jack Ray right back with a spare leaf. The three and the six with wood on the way. Don't know if it'll get there. He's going to have a clear shot at the three and six. Ooh, he pulled it to the left. Well, George Ashley with two marks up here, so he picks up seven pins in that box, cutting the lead down to 30. the one five punch out chance for George Ashley again we would be working on a spear in the eighth and doesn't seem like Jack's gonna convert this what he wants to do is avoid a bad box still looking at six pins and works and out for a seven and George gained three in count because of the seven box and now he's Still got to fill that spare. If he were to throw a strike here, and start working on that lead that Jack had in the f after the first game, which was 21. Well, pretty good looking <laughs> ball going in, but same leave we've had all day long. <laughs> Four, five, and seven. But this time, a piece of wood to the right of the seven pin. Chance to sweep over here. Let's see if it works. Watch out. Nice. Look like a little stumble at the point of release that time, pull the ball to the left. We'll grab the two for the 10 box. 113 through nine. Candle pin stars and strikes brought to you in part by the folks at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan, Route 97 in Salem, New Hampshire. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Well, this time the three, five, and seven for George. Wood to help, but no, he missed it to the him. left. I think you heard him say no. He knew he was going to, as soon as he released that ball, was not going to be on target. It's 122. The sixth, seventh, and eighth frames there, you can see George Ashley picked up 23 pins of the lead. Gets it back down to 20, but Jack is opposite two open frames now in the ninth and tenth. But he is off target again. Four horsemen left, plus the six, nine, and ten. 
just missed the head pin or he might have had a good shot at this. And Jack will take a nine box but another pin gained by George Ashley and the lead now down to 19. And uh, this could turn out to be a very big box in this match right now. Jack Ray could put a mark up and get that lead back up over 20. Make things a little more tough for George Ashley in game three. Back on the head pin. Oh, oh big nine drop and a little tickle on the 10 pin too. Wow. <laughs> Those first nine pins just flew out of there. And nothing until the very end even touched the 10 pin. Whoa! <laughs> and he just barely touches the 10 pin there for the spare in the 10th. 121. Jack had a 137 opening game. And a big nine drop on his spare, so he'll take 130 in game two. So he winds up adding to his lead, 267 after two for Jack Ray, 238 for George Ashley. You see the lead, 29 pins for Jack Ray with one game to go, and we'll be back for it at Park Place Lanes in Wyndham after these words. Hi, I'm Jim Palmer. The Money Store has built its business by helping homeowners reestablish their credit. For over 25 years, they've specialized in helping people who are behind on their mortgage, credit cards, and other loans to establish a new budget with one loan, one payment. So if you have credit problems and own a home, call the Money Store. You can refinance your mortgage and end up with a sensible budget that works for you. Call the Money Store at 1-800-LOAN-YES. The Money Store, where America goes for money. Ham Toyota Dodge Nissan proudly presents the Shirt Factory 5 Road Race on October 27th starting at 1 p.m. at the Salem, New Hampshire Boys and Girls Club. Registration forms are available at all sponsor locations. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan, the Shirt Factory, the Salem Home Depot, Chunky Cinema Pub, Pro Player, Ram Printing, and WNDS. Or call the Salem, New Hampshire Boys and Girls Club. Lynn Jennings set an American record on this fast five-mile course. The Shirt Factory 5 featuring over 150 awards and post-race party October 27th at the Salem, New Hampshire Boys and Girls Club. New Honey Nut Cheerios, and they're all for me. Nobody can say no to New Honey Nut Cheerios. No, no, you can't say no to the Honey Nut O's in New Honey Nut Cheerios. What's new is a better blend of real golden honey for a better taste and a bigger crunch. Nobody can say no to the Honey Nut O's in New Honey Nut Cheerios. No, no, you can't say no to New Honey Nut Cheerios. It's new. Everybody loves this. What better place than an NFL game to ask people about the taste of Wheaties, the breakfast of champions? Well, you can really taste the whole wheat. I like it. I like the taste. They've got a toasted whole wheat flavor. Very good. Crunchy. Real good. Can I have another bite? It's just a kind of crunchy, toasted taste. Mm. I'm going to run home and buy a box of Wheaties for me and my kids. Try the championship taste of toasted whole wheat Wheaties. You better eat your Wheaties. Hey, that's my line. Get ready for even more Simpsons. Because now the Simpsons are on back to back. Yes! It means two times the fun. Excellent. Double the hijinks. I hear you loud and clear. Twice the laughs. Multiple merriment. Everyone's getting excited about the Simpsons. Now with back to back episodes every weekday. Enjoy the Simpsons weeknights at 5 on WNDS. Jack Ray will start game three as we return to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. And he carries a 29 pin advantage into this third game. And he's right on there for a strike. Wow. Strike number three for Jack. Brooklyn hit. 11 marks, eight spares and three strikes now for Jack Ray. We've yet to see a double strike today. Not this time. A little full. 
three, six, four, seven. No wood to help him this time. He's probably going to try to split the three and the six and try to jump the three pin into that four and seven. Pretty close. Pretty close. Well, Jack with a 29 pin lead coming into this third game. Uh, if he were to put up one mark every time up there, one out of two, that would be pretty tough to catch him. Probably enough to uh, get the win. But we have seen many miraculous comebacks over the years. You just never know in this game. Seven and ten pins left for George. A couple pieces of wood. George Ashley threw a 158 game in the roll-off. I'm sure he'd take one of those right now and take his chances. Tried to go to the right-hand tip of that wood and caught too much of the center and just pushed the wood back and left at 7-10 and just an eight frame. So he drops another nine pins to Jack Ray. In the pocket that time, oh, maybe a little boy. thin, and look at the leave. Yep. And that wood didn't really turn enough for him. If it had turned a little bit more, he might have been able to sweep it across, but a very difficult shot the way it's aligned right now. He's going to give him a chance. Oh, oh, Go how about that? that ball. Oh, great try. Boy, he did not have an angle on that wood at all and turned it into something there. takes a 10 box but two open frames will be very costly watch how close this was as he played the wood cap oh and then the ball goes by good effort George had a couple shots at marks but uh, good efforts don't win the match unfortunately wow boy we've seen a lot of Tough leaves today, although this one with the wood. With the woods makes it a little easier. That ball looked like a better ball than the 5-7 leave, though. But he was fortunate enough to get the wood and convert it. 12 marks now for Jack Ray. As we return for a brand new season here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, it's uh, good to get back here to Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Nick Moskilly and his staff always take great care of us while we're here taping the program, and it means it's also good to get back to the good folks at Willow Tree North Restaurant, located right here inside Park Place Lanes. Ooh, Jack misfiring on the spare attempt. Tried to avoid that piece of wood first and just pulled it left. So when you're here for candlepin bowling on your own, league play, whatever, open bowling, or perhaps you're down here... Uh, watching a taping of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Always good to make uh, plans to have at least one meal at uh, the Willow Tree North Restaurant right inside Park Place Lanes. Because remember, it's where the crew eats. <laughs> they were screaming in the truck. They were screaming. <laughs> Good try, George, but no mark to show for it. Seven gives him 25 through three. Lead now 48. Now, George off target that time. Took out just the three and the five. George takes a nine box, and we take a break from Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire, week one of our first series of the new season. We'll be back with more of Jack Ray against George Ashley in a minute.
nice bowl of shredded wheat. Yeah, I think so. Well, you could eat total and get 100% of 11 vitamins and minerals. Try to get that from shredded wheat, and you'll have to add more than just milk. Like what? Well, you could try strawberries for vitamin C. Oh, that sounds good. Lima beans for iron, eggs for some vitamin E. You've got to be kidding. Some peanuts for niacin, or a nice piece of liver for some B6. I'll try the total. Whole grain total. One bowl, 100%. Hey, don't mm. eat it just for me. Mm. Mm. On an all-new Babylon 5. Sheridan is embarking upon a fool's mission. There's something I need you to do. They've been outgunned and outnumbered. They tore him apart. Now, their only hope for survival... It knows we're here. ...is to take the battle deep inside their enemy's mind. One's getting through. If you're gonna do something, do it. Now, on an all-new Babylon 5. Today at 5 on WNDS. Here are the winning numbers from last night's Tri-State Megabucks drawing. Jack Ray with a comfortable 48-pin lead with six boxes to go. That's one of those very deceiving statistics. Yeah. Jack's record here, three and seven. And, uh, oh, my, there's another strike. He likes lane 32 in this game. So. He's marked all three times. Two of them have been strikes. Yeah, Jack's had some great scores on the show, and unfortunately, his opponent uh, did a little better. So that three and seven is deceiving. In fact, that's what happened the last time he was here. We talked about that match a year ago, April, against Gary Carrington, who Gary threw a 416 at him. Jack threw a fine 386, but it wasn't enough. Oh, how about that shot? Unbelievable. Wow. A four, seven, eight, nine. Watch, it looked like he was full in that four pin, but just pushed everything to the right, cleared the nine out. George Ashley hey. right back with a strike. Well, <laughs> it looked in the early part of this game, Dan, like George was laboring a little bit, but that ball was very smooth and in the pocket for his second strike of the day. So he picks on the one-two pocket. Maybe that's the one he should be playing. Looking for the double. Whoa, that could change yeah. things. A double strike, but it doesn't quite happen for George. Seven and eight left. This is an interesting leaf. Yeah, so I could go at the seven pin, have the ball carry him off, and use that wood. Yes. yes. Perfect. Actually use the wood for both pins. So George matches the strike spare put up by Jack Ray. He still trails by 48 pins, though, now with just four boxes to go. Oh, look out. Jack Boy. is firing now. Solid nine pin drop leaves just the five and how about this Dan? Would you believe according to my uh, notes here? That's only the second nine drop of the day oh. for either bowler on, on marks No, I, I'm talking about uh, Whenever really that was only the second nine drop of the day. How do you uh, keep these stats? You Somebody are amazing. <laughs> are absolutely well, amazing. Again, it might be wrong, but I think oh, really that was only what the second did, uh, one. What did George do the second box with the second ball? <laughs> See? <laughs> I remember, but I'm not telling. Just two on that spare for Jack. Oops. And two more. Trying to clear him up now with his last ball, and he does. Gets eight. 112. Zeroing in on that 400 triple. I need another mark, though. George working on a spare, and he lost it to the left. Just one. Not the time for George. The one to get away from George. And you take a 10. You'd love to have that first ball back. And look out. Getting better, but still not a great leave. The six and the seven, but as with most of the leaves, it seems today, there's wood everywhere. I 
that piece of wood, if it stops out there, will be well out of play. It may roll out. Nope. Now it's coming back. Next week's challenger, fellow's been with us before, Glenn LeBlanc. Although it's been quite some time. Yes, it has been a while. 1992, in fact. Wow, since, uh, yep, since Glenn LeBlanc's been here. So he'll get the winner of this match. The runner-up today gets a check for $100 for fifth place. That piece of wood was out of play, removed by Cindy Sissom. It's going to go right at the six pin. And oh, wow. just didn't have quite enough angle to carry the seven. Hit the wood over there by the yeah. seven, though. And a nine. Watch the wood over by the seven pin. Ooh. Might have been a, just a tad high in the wood, but... Well, Jack Ray needs one mark here in the last two boxes for a 400 triple, and he'll have a shot at it right here. Very close to a strike. A pin flew in between the four and the seven. The two that he's left standing for the spare. Oh, he's got it. That is the 16th mark for Jack Ray. 12 spares, four strikes today. Usually the magic number for 400 is around 15 marks in the three-sting match. And depending on your fills, this is Jack's 16th, and this should put him over 400. Yes, without a doubt. Yes, indeed. And now that you said there hasn't been many nine-pin drops, we're, <laughs> we're getting a bunch. Seven-pin for Jack to finish up this 10th frame. That is Jack's third yes. nine-pin drop of the day, and he's converted all three for marks. There's number 17. Gives him 141 in a ball to come. And through the center that time, just five. A 146 for Jack Ray and a three-game total of 413. Well, Jack says, I've been beaten by high scores here. He says, <laughs> I got to put a high score up there. Make sure it doesn't happen. Yikes. That was right in the 1-3 pocket. And George leaves the 2, 4, 5, 8, and 10 with no wood. Well, George Ashley will take home a consolation check for $100 for his fifth place finish in this series and he could still earn $250 if he were to throw a triple strike sure. here in the 10th. Not to be. So that means our triple strike pool will go up to $300 next week. Spare in the 10th for George Ashley. That's 10 marks for George today. Two plus a ball. Make it seven more for 109 and a three game total of 347 for George Ashley in his first appearance with us on the wins. He congratulates Jack Ray for his outstanding 413. We'll be back to talk to both bowlers and see if we can't win somebody some money in the bonus ball contest when we come back in a minute. Bernard's Furniture and Bedding is closing their doors forever. Roland Bernard, the man that's been bringing New England quality furniture for 19 years, is leaving the business. The entire inventory must be liquidated immediately. No reasonable offer refused. Furnish your home with the finest quality bedroom, living room, and dining room sets now 40 to 70% off. Mattress and box spring sets as low as $99. First come, first sold on end tables, futons, dressers, entertainment units, and more. This is your chance to purchase the finest furniture at rock bottom prices. Special financing is also available. Bernard's Furniture and Bedding, 655 Mass Road in tax-free Manchester, New Hampshire. And they found this slump in my esophagus. He told me it was the biggest one he'd ever seen. <laughs> At St. Joseph, people don't forget our way of care. It really was a serious operation. It was a success. The nurses are something else in this hospital. They really are. Aren't they, Sarah? Ask Sarah and Ernie Vaness, or ask anyone, about St. Joseph Healthcare. We just don't discuss what hospital you go to. You, you just take it for granted you go to St. Joe's. Can you guess which cereal will now carry the American Heart Association symbol? The answer shouldn't surprise you. It's Cheerios. A 
diet low in saturated fat and cholesterol, including Cheerios, may help reduce the risk of heart disease. This Cheerios, made from whole grain oats, is also a good source of fiber. And those delicious O's are low in fat and saturated fat with no cholesterol. No wonder Cheerios carries the American Heart Association symbol. Beverly Hills 90210, weeknights at 6 on WNDS TV 50, Derry, New Hampshire. We're back on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Glad you could be with us today. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy as we wrap up our first show of the new season. Uh, first time on television, first time with us for George Ashley. Do you remember back the first time you were on television? Yes, and I'd much rather forget it. <laughs> yeah, he did much better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk to George Ashley. Come on up, George. We have a check for you here for fifth place, $100. And uh, our congratulations. We, we always, actually, we probably don't talk enough about how difficult it is to get on television on this program. And then, of course, once you get here, you have to get it done while you're here. Jack Ray uh, really made it difficult for you today and uh, closed you out. Yeah, he came out real strong and never let up and uh, just a good bowler. It was, it was, you know, even though he killed me, <laughs> so to speak, <laughs> it, it was a lot of fun, and I wish him luck the rest of the way. Well, congratulations to you also, George, for getting here for the first time, and uh, perhaps it won't be so difficult the next time around. Hopefully I'll get back real soon. <laughs> All right, George. Thank you. Thanks very much. That's George Ashley from Milford, New Hampshire. And now it's time for our bonus ball contest as Jack Ray, today's winner, will step up on lane 31 to see if he can't get us a match. We have $80 in the jackpot today. So we'll see what Jack can do here. And it will be six, Dan Murphy, to draw the card for us. Drawing very quickly and not a match for Aurora Hamill from Salem, New Hampshire, whose guess was five, very close. But instead, uh, Aurora Hamill will be receiving a consolation gift from uh, the NHCBA and from NNR Trophy. Step right in here, Jack. Good to see you. It's been a little while, but uh, you made it pay off today. Good, uh, good scoring early, and that helped you. Well, uh, you know, you have to get out of the gate, especially when you yep. lead off, and uh, fortunately I did, and uh, I kept on a little roll there for a while. So uh, George had a couple of bad breaks, though. It kind of turned the tide a bit. Next week you go for two in a row. Uh, Glenn LeBlanc will be coming in. Yeah, I'll be ready for him. All right, Jack, we'll see you then. Thank you. Thanks very much. Jack Gray from Stowe, Massachusetts, picking up his win. But, of course, it takes four to get all the way to the Tournament of Champions when you start here in week one. And that's awful, awful tough because you get a fresh body coming in and get you each week, and... Uh, Next week, uh, he's no pushover either. All right, Glenn LeBlanc makes his return after about four years away on Stars and Strikes next week. We hope you will join us for that. Don't forget, Saturday at noon, Candlepin Skins from Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill. And back here Sunday at noon for Candlepin Stars and Strikes, it'll be Jack Ray against Glenn LeBlanc next Sunday. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole Winds of New England crew, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good week, everybody. Thanks for being with us.